Hego. Enjoy to you. This is Brian Rice, executive producer of Christ Realization Radio, welcoming you into sacred space of expanding consciousness, self-discovery, transformation, new possibilities, and divine potential. To share with you the good news that God dwells in you. Are you seeking a deeper interpersonal relationship with God? Are you called to live in the original teachings of the Christ and embodying these teachings in your daily life? Then join us on Christ Realization Radio, programming that offers all-inclusive trans-denominational perspectives on deepening your individual and collective divine consciousness and transforming our world into oneness. The focus of our radio network is to inspire and offer assistance to expand your inner awareness of divine presence. Learn deeper ways of spiritual mastery through dialogue, study groups, contemplation, prayer, meditation, and spiritual practices. Join the conversation with progressive spiritual luminaries of our time who seek to bring oneness to our world. Here on Christ Realization Radio, we like to meet people wherever they are at in their awareness of their inner divinity and assist them in various ways by offering classes and study groups, discussion groups, doing one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and more. This network is dedicated to the expansion of consciousness. We hope to be channels of peace for you, and we hope to inspire you to become channels of peace in the world. This network is going to continue being a vehicle and a mustard seed, growing big as we expect great things. But we need you to be a part of that with your faithful listenership. Through your support, through your calling in, in learning and engaging in a dialogue, taking part in all this network has to offer. We hope you will walk the path with us growing in higher awareness about your true divine nature, the Christ, or the Buddha self, or whatever you call the divine God self within. Thank you for your openness and your willingness. Our goal is to lift you up and help you realize your divine potential and true identity in the divine. You are listening to Christ Realization Radio, where you will discover the reality and the essence of your presence. With programs brought to you by Project New Humanity Communications, You are listening to Turning Points and Transformations with your host, Brian Rice. Will today be the day that you have your breakthrough in consciousness? It is time to be uplifted.
enjoyed you, friends. And thank you for listening. This is Brian Rice. I just want to precede the episode by saying that I'm going to do some teachings from 2018, where I'm at now, before we listen to where I was at in 2013 for a Lenten reflection on the theme of conscious healing. We're going to first talk here in the present about healing, sickness, well-being, what they all have to do with each other, how they relate. And what we can do to become conscious healers. I believe that you will find some similarities and parallels between some of the teachings that I used in the past, some of the points I tried to make from my practice of, at the time, kundalini yoga, having returned from a training and a retreat called the Healing Path with two kundalini yoga masters. But before we get to that, and some of the reflections I made in a shorter episode than usual, we're going to talk about how healing is accomplished according to A Course in Miracles. Before we get started, I just want to share with you a meditation. This and other meditations can be found on my website, brianrice.org. Oneness with the All Realization Meditation The God Presence within me recognizes the God Presence in all. I am the peace of God, the neutrality of God, the still calm presence of God in form. The God life within me is the spirit in which I trust and I draw my strength from this inner haven from which all good things come, including perfect health and well-being, perfect love and perfect trust that in And through that very God reservoir, all things are provided for me. For the Father, Mother, God is the supreme provider. Through God communion and oneness with the ultimate reality, the primal God bliss, I extend myself to all of creation, all brothers and sisters, as does the God mind, God consciousness, presence in the center of my being. In God mind, because of God mind, there are no enemies, there is no separation, only the truth of love present in all of my interactions, even with difficult people during difficult and challenging circumstances. I rise to meet the day, and I transcend all subconscious and delusion-based behavior and thinking that tries to cloud my vision in interaction with people My ego determines our rivals. Though it would be absurd to trust everyone completely, I still forgive any and all past, current, and future error perpetrated by brothers and sisters in spirit. Everyone is made and preserved perfectly in the oneness of God-likeness, and I see the perfect emanation of God-beauty in all expressions of life alike. I dissolve all fear, and hate through the spirit of love and wonder. I am perfect forgiveness that causes all separation to vanish into thin air and into the ethers beyond all time. 
May the light of God, Guru, inner teacher within, be my voice this day, guiding my every thought, speech and deed, trusting in the perfect glove of God. I wear the armor that protects me from all rejection and strife, again making the pre-decision to forgive all things, all the time, everywhere, because I am one with all of creation, through and in God presence and aliveness. And so I realize that it is ego that divides and fear that poisons and blocks the awareness of love's presence from emerging out of the primordial creative center of all existence. Through perfect forgiveness, all things are made new. Okay, thank you very much for taking time to listen to that. I wrote that, I believe, back in 2011 or 12. And released it, as mentioned, a few moments ago, as part of the album Light Transmissions, based upon the book by the same name. Nonetheless, I would absolutely love your support. So, let's turn to the material of today's show, the content of today's show. I'm looking at the manual for teachers, number 22, how are healing and atonement related? Well, we're not going to talk about the two of them specifically, even though they are identical. If you're a course student, you know what the atonement means, the correction, the healing, the undoing of the ego script, the ego thought system, and ultimately the undoing of the projection of the world. In the context of here in the Manda for Teachers, the third part of the course, The need to heal guilt, again, is brought up, as it is in many places throughout the Course. I'd like to read a little bit from this, and then we'll comment on it afterwards. Paragraph 3 reads, that forgiveness as healing needs to be understood if the teacher of God is to make progress. The idea that a body can be sick is a central concept in the ego's thought system. This thought gives the body autonomy, separates it from the mind, and keeps the idea of attack inviolate. If the body could be sick, atonement would be impossible. A body that can order a mind to do, to do as it sees fit could merely take the place of God and prove salvation is impossible. What then is left to heal? The body has become lord of the mind. How could the mind be returned to the Holy Spirit unless the body is killed? And who would want salvation at such a price? We made the body. The ego thought system made the body. The ego mind, our collective ego, made many bodies, the multiplicity of bodies. So if we can make bodies... We can make sickness. And sickness, as it was just mentioned, is a concept of the ego's thought system. The, 
Because it's a belief in the body. And the ego is a murderer, as the Course says in many instances. And it is this very murderous nature, this nature that wants to see the body killed, the body in pain, the body to suffer, the bodies of other to suffer and be in pain. All out of guilt from being, feeling rather, not being, but feeling that we're separated from God. That primal separation that we seem to feel from having rejected God and made this world, as the Course says. We don't want the body to become the Lord of the mind. The mind, the higher mind, the Christ mind, the higher self, that is also the true self, can't be sick. It's pure, it's innocent, it's guiltless. So again, guilt has much to do with illness of any kind. And as the psychotherapy pamphlet talks about, all illness is mental illness. We will be referring to that in a short while. So hang on tight. I want to continue after I ask you this question. Do you think that sickness is a choice? Do we really have a choice in the matter? Well, the Course says here in the Main of Our Teachers, paragraph 4, Certainly sickness does not appear to be a decision, nor would anyone actually believe he wants to be sick. Perhaps he can accept the idea in theory, but it is rarely, if ever, consistently applied to all specific forms of sickness, both in the individual's perception of himself and all others as well. Nor is it at this level that the teacher of God calls forth the miracle of healing. He overlooks the mind and body, seeing only the face of Christ shining in front of him, correcting all mistakes and healing all perception. Healing is the result of the recognition by God's teacher of who it is that is in need of healing. This recognition has no special reference. It is true of all things that God created. In it are all illusions healed. goes on to say in paragraph 5, When a teacher of God fails to heal, it is because he has forgotten who he is. Teacher of God, you, me, everyone, the son, everyone in the sonship, is the Christ. We are the son and daughter of God. The one son, the one daughter. The one child, rather. So, distorted perception and sickness are, in, are synonymous. Sickness is a distortion of perception. So, yes, it's us who decides to be sick. us who decides to be anxious, depressed, alienated. Well, that's not a sickness, but it's a state of mind. 
it's we we make the decision to have mood swings. We make the decision to be fragmented instead of whole. Why? Well, as the psychotherapy pamphlet po- points out, all sickness is mental illness. All illness is mental illness, rather. Because we come from mind, and we have a split mind, which has done a great job of trying to convince us that the body is real, that physicality is real, that the third dimensional experience is real, and that it's all there is. And so when we convince ourselves that we are victims of the world we see, that we be get sick or we get a germ or we catch a cold or we get the flu it's because of something that happened outside of us that's projection it's blaming it's what the ego does so the ego itself is a thought of sickness I want to flip to the part in the psychotherapy pamphlet that I was going to share. Now, it really is a... tall order, it might seem like, to accept that sickness is a decision, but it really is. Think of the power of the mind, as it's talked about in many spiritualities. Wholeness. Well-being. Wellness. These are all related. So underneath number four, in chapter two of the, of the psychotherapy pamphlet, The process of illness, paragraph one reads, is all therapy is psychotherapy, so all illness is mental illness. It is a judgment on the Son of God, and judgment is a mental activity. Judgment is a decision made again and again against creation and its creator. It is a decision to perceive the universe as you would have created it. It is It is a decision that truth can lie and must be lies. What then can illness be except an expression of sorrow and of guilt? And who could weep but for his innocence? Paragraph 2 reads, Once God's Son is seen as guilty, illness becomes inevitable. It has been asked for and will be received. All who ask for illness have now condemned themselves to seek for remedies that cannot help, because their faith is in the illness and not in salvation. There can be nothing that a change of mind cannot affect, for all external things are only shadows of a decision already made. Change the decision in how it's shadow. How can its shadow be unchanged? Continuing on. Illness can be but guilt, shadow, grotesque and ugly, since it mimics deformity. If a deformity is seen as real... What could its shadow be except deformed? Paragraph 3, under number 4, in chapter 2 of the psychotherapy pamphlet, reads, The descent into hell follows step by step in an inevitable course once the decision that guilt is real has been made. Sickness and death and misery now stalk the earth in unrelenting waves, sometimes together and sometimes in grim succession. Yet all these things, however real they seem, are but illusions. 
Who could have faith in them once this is realized? And who could not have faith in them until he realizes this? Healing is therapy or correction, and until we have already we have said already and will say again. No, and we have said already and will say again, all therapy is psychotherapy. To heal the sick is but to bring this realization to them. So words like judgment were brought up. Guilty. We, we threw around the word illness. Shadows. Deformity. Grotesque and ugly. Illness can be but guilt, shadow, grotesque, and ugly since it mimics deformity. If a deformity is seen as real, what could its shadow be except deformed? So sickness is a decision. All illness is mental illness. It is a judgment on the Son of God. Because judgment is a mental activity. So illness, it's an expression of sorrow and guilt. It's understandable why so many religions or re so many spiritual disciplines are so hung up on sin. Because being guilty or condemning others by saying they are guilty is really our way of trying to get rid of or people's way of trying to get rid of guilt that they feel over having rejected God. Again, if you want to say that there was a fall, it was that, that there was this tiny tick of time where the tiny mad idea came in where the son of God forgot to laugh and we sought to usurp the power of God try to be like Lucifer say I'm not going to serve God I'm not going to be at one with God I'm going to do my own thing So the guilt that came from that is what causes sickness. The guilt that comes from that is what drives much of the atonement, the understanding of atonement in sacrificial, sacrificial offerings in other religions and in Christianity and the history of Judaism. Sacrifice. Somebody's got to pay for sin for guilt something's got to be done somebody's got to suffer something's got to die in order for guilt to be expiated or forgiven forgiveness is healing we heal by forgiving others and forgiving ourselves Think of the ministry of Jesus, of Yeshua, in the life that's recounted, accounted for in the Bible. When he healed people, he said their sins were forgiven. Go and sin no more. He wasn't making sin real by saying that. He wasn't forgiving something that the person really did. Sin is an illusion. Sin, yes, in the Course's definition is a lack of love. Or the absence of love, rather. But, Yeshua didn't go around making sin real. He didn't, no. He saw that it was a mental activity. It was judgment against oneself. And he saw that all Ill illness was mental illness. So he relieved people of their mental agony. It's crippling, isn't it? 
and I'm not going to get into my story, but I can relate because I went through a period where there was a time where I was crippled by activity of the mind, judgment against myself, guilt, illusion, shadows, things that were grotesque and ugly. The things that I made through art were frightening. But they weren't real, though they seemed real. And that's the thing. It seems real. We, make, we try to make it real. We try to play God. We try to make our creations or things we make real. Now, some sickness comes about, you know, such as cancer or a heart attack. And we say, how could God let this happen? Well, God doesn't do it. God's not in this dream world, this nightmare that we're creating. The Holy Spirit is in our memory because God placed it there at the moment we decided to separate and thought we separated. So the healing and the atonement happened at the same time that we thought we separated from God. Again, it's all about guilt. And that's why forgiveness is so important. And it took almost 2,000 years later when Yeshua spoke to Helen Schuckman, who took down the Course in Miracles, A Course in Miracles, to really speak about what he was trying to do back during his ministry in his 30s. So all healing begins with forgiveness. The correction. The atonement. Said I wasn't going to mention atonement very much, but it's hard not to talk about it when it's healing and the atonement are identical. You can't be a healer unless you have healed yourself. We need to heal. And when I originally did the show... Back in 2012 or 2013, Conscious Healing, what you'll hear after this is an added bonus. It was done during Lent, a time where correction is made, where people willing, willingly in some Christian denominations abstain from certain things, fast, pray a great deal, and do penance. All we really need to do to heal is to see that we are the innocent lamb of God. Now that might sound heretical, but you are the lamb of God. You can take away the sins of the world by stop seeing it in other people, in your brother, in your sister in your spouse, in your parents. 
in your teachers, in your coaches, in your presidents, in your world leaders, in your politicians, your public servants. They may appear to do things that are unloving, but they're mistakes that can be corrected and hopefully learned from. Not something that should be punished for eternity. Judgment is a terrible thing. Criticism, blame comes from it. These two things come from judgment. We do it all the time. We do it to ourselves, and we definitely do it to other people. We do it to other people because we're doing it to ourselves first. If we could just love. Unconditionally love ourselves. Release guilt. However that might look or might happen for any given individual. Some people might think that it has to be through saying a hundred Hail Marys, our fathers. Some feel they might have to get down on their knees and say, I'm sorry to God, but God's not offended by anything we do. God takes no offense. There's nothing God that gets under God's skin because God has no skin. God is formless. But there's nothing that we could do, do to disappoint God at all. Because God is only love, unconditional love. So would you rather be in hell or heaven? Wellness, wholeness is the state of paradise. It's a state of mind. Heaven is not some place in the sky it's a state of awareness we're either we feel that we're either in it or we feel that we're either in hell and we make hell there is no place called hell in the teachings of A Course in Miracles that is so what do, I, what do I want you really to take from any of the ideas that I presented today in this brief look at illness and healing? It's to know that you have more power than you think. You can begin the healing process now, no matter what it is you're going through. So you might ask, what do I do to help it happen? How do I heal my cancer that's terminal? Well, you might not be able to, but you can heal the mind, though the body might not experience a physical healing. But the guilt behind it that might have caused it in the first place can be healed. So you can let go of the body and set it aside when the time comes for it to be set aside. So ultimately, if you have a terminal illness, you can experience peace, love, and joy through self-forgiveness. But much of what we experience is illness and suffering is self-induced. It is a decision. We either believe we're worthy of God's love or we're unworthy of God's love. And when we believe we're unworthy of God's love, then we start to condemn 
ourselves in others. When we condemn, we judge. When we judge, we blame. When we criticize, we create hell. And again, illness becomes an expression of sorrow and guilt. Because somewhere deep down, we know that we're not made. We weren't created. To punish. Or to hurt. Or to inflict anything on anyone or ourselves. We were made perfect. The one mind that we belong to is perfect and still is. So it's all about a change of mind. And a willingness to allow it to be purified. It's an allowance. It is a process. But it can happen just by saying, I am absolved. Or whatever word works for you. Whatever can convince you that you are made worthy. So now I want you to just listen to some of the reflections that I made in the older show. We'll talk about healing in a different different way, slightly different way. Thank you for joining me here on Turning Points and Transformations. Again, my name is Brian Rice, if you didn't get that at the beginning. Here on Christ Realization Radio. I bless you. I send you forth. Again, stick around for the added bonus feature, the rebroadcast of Conscious Healing. Thank you. Peace and joy. way of non-violence, it's the only path to start the revolution of everlasting peace, become a messiah, because the world is insane, it's no time to be passive, take decisive action, receive the new dispensation, Universal priesthood of the Pentecostal flame, no religious boundary. I know it hurts, bearing the burden <laughs> and all the pain of humanity, being one step away from self destruction. <laughs> We've all been there, but I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, you are a savior, and only love will mend, only love will bind. Only love will cause change. So transcend the animal in you. It's time to build the superhumanity of God-realized beings. Realize the agent of our oneness. Heal the separation. By going out as sheep among wolves. Treading on scorpions. Filled with fiery lights. Working day and night To bring home the lost and broken Bring them back into the fold Of the fullness of heaven The kingdom within By a mystical enlightenment Awakening in this new age 
be your own sage. I know it hurts. <laughs> Bearing the burden and all the pain of humanity. Being one step away from self-destruction. We've all been there. But I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. You are a savior. And only love will mend. Only love will bind. Only love will cause change. So transcend the animal in you. It's time to build the superhumanity of God-realized beings. Don't fall back asleep. The time of now is crucial to spread the holy virus of God union. The bliss of God communion and sweet samadhi. Don't forget nirvana, cosmic conscious for all sons and daughters. Of the absolute, your one and true identity. Pray for your brothers and sisters, for the family of the Most High. I know it hurts, <laughs> bearing the burden and all the pain of humanity, being one step away from self-destruction. We've all been there, but I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, you are a savior. And only love will mend. Only love will bind. Only love will cause change. So transcend the animal in you. It's time to build the superhumanity of God-realized beings. Can't live in a bubble. Come out of solitude. And so some seeds on fertile ground. Life's world on fire With the Holy Spirit Some call it Shakti Or the life force Housed in the spine Ascending and descending angels Here that help in the cause Of bringing heaven to earth I know it hurts <laughs> Bearing the burden and all the pain of humanity being one step away from self-destruction. We've all been there. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, you are a savior. And only love will mend. Only love will bind. Only love will cause change. So transcend the animal in you. It's time to build the superhumanity of God-realized beings. Well, hello, and welcome to Turning Points and Transformations. This is Brian Rice, Father Brian Rice, welcoming you for a special episode called Conscious Healing. And I just want to let you know that uh, most of these uh, episodes that you hear here on the Way of Consciousness Radio Network are also available at turningpointsandtransformations.org. That's turningpointsandtransformations.org. And happy again that you have chosen to listen to the show Happy that you've chosen to tune in and am really ecstatic about the support that you're giving the whole network as a whole, um, especially some of the newer programs um, and newly refined programs, Liberation Spirituality, as well as uh, uh, Progressive Christian Living. So thank you very much for your support and the network as a whole. And I just want to... um, I want to take today to say that uh, uh, we all experience pain and we all want to and we all need to experience a cleansing and a renewal. And what a better time of the year to do that than during Lent. And during this period of uh, transformation, of purification, of reflection, introspection, we it's not so much about mortification about the giving up of habits, but uh, uh, the giving up of things, uh, giving up of things that sometimes may harm us. Although those things are good to do too, to refine our choices and to uh, rejuvenate ourselves through um, purification 
as a whole that is a great practice to engage in. Um, but uh, conscious healing involves making intentions, making intentions for yourself and for your loved ones. And uh, your loved ones can include your pets. And these animals bring us so much joy in our lives, and it's hard not to uh, include them in our prayers and, and our supplications and our upliftments and our intentions that we have. Um, I'm currently sitting at home alone with five animals, one of which just had surgery. He had to have his claws removed. He's about three years old, so it's it was a, it's a surgery that had some risks um, when you do that with an older cat. Um, we took in this cat back in uh, uh, 2011, I believe, and uh, he's taken and making a home here with us. Um, and uh, he's a, quite a personality, and it was quite interesting having him gone for a day and a half. Um, and we feel a void in our lives when we have uh, pets and children and and um, and loved ones missing um, or away from us. And we do need sometimes, and that sometimes reminds us of our need for healing and our need for renewal. Um, it's good to take a step back, as I'm doing now, while I'm watching my cat recover, um, you know, heal himself, um, take time for himself to uh become um more uh back to his original functioning without claws. <laughs> so um and it, it'll certainly help our furniture. Uh, I can tell you that much. It definitely uh has helped uh <laughs> in a very big way. Um already just having him uh be caught uh, because I can see the future as it <laughs> being so much more um, home, uh, home, wholesome and uh, and free from the catastrophes caused by cats. So uh, our other two cats are declawed. They were declawed at youth, and uh, um, they're indoor cats, so there's no harm in doing so. And... Um, why speak of my animals and conscious healing in the same vein? Well, um, because uh, as my animal is in in the depths of healing right now, in the throngs of healing, uh, so aren't we, and so am I. And I was away for a healing weekend in a Kundalini yoga training, and uh, the theme was the healing path, and. Lots of things were talked about from diet on to uh, um, holistic choices and uh, lifestyle choices. And that's really what purification is about and when um, is about taking a look at how we're living our lives in in relationship to the divine as well, the divine and dwelling God presence within ourselves. And uh, it's not... It's not uh it's it is rather uh, a good thing to take daily time to center to center on what it is that makes us click what it is that makes us uh, sorry dead air. <laughs> what it is that makes us go on and move forward and make choices, what it is that motivates us is what I'm trying to get at. And motivations are, uh, they come from many sources, primal sources, uh, as well as uh, evolutionary forces. Um, we We are evolving in consciousness and we constantly are, updating ourselves, upgrading ourselves, just like we need to update software for our computers and our phones and our electronic devices, we need to upgrade our consciousness. And we can upgrade our consciousness through conscious application of healing. And we can take time for ourselves daily, as I said, to 
uh, step back and to say some affirmations. One good one to say is I am and to declare that you are and you are in the presence of God always, now, forever. Say I am. I am. And say it from a gut level. I am. Very therapeutic to be able to say I am and say be still and know that I am God, to know that God is within us, to be still and know the divine and dwelling God presence, the loving presence, the infinite source of creativity the infinite source of abundance. Tuning into that presence is is vital. We need to take time every day to reflect. We need to take time every day, many times a day, to be mindful. And conscious healing is an act of being mindful. Being mindful of our needs, mindful of what it is that we're doing, we have to make everything we do a living meditation. Everything. From doing the dishes to doing yard work, shoveling the driveway if it's snow, season for you as it was for me this morning. In all our daily activities, we should seek to uplift our consciousness. Seek upliftment. Seek upliftment. Seek upliftment and we will be renewed. We constantly want to refer to the state within ourselves. We constantly want to connect within ourselves to super consciousness, to blissful awareness. And we can do this through silent time, as I've been talking about in the Silent Mind Meditation Program that was designed by Anmo Mehta from AnmoMehta.com. Taking a break from that this week, as you might have noticed. Um, that will continue to be available on turningpointsandtransformations.org, the Silent Mind Meditation Program. And um, I really suggest that you take it up. It's a 12 week process, uh, gentle yoga and pranayam, uh, breath control, and also uh, energy work. Uh, and transformation uh, of the self, total self, the coming into contact with ultimate reality, which is our true reality, which is that we are the I am presence, that we are the Christ consciousness, the Buddha awareness, the Buddha consciousness, the Krishna consciousness. We are one with God. It's not heretical to say in these days and age, in this day and age, it's more acceptable for us to be able to say that that we are one with the divine. And it's very hard when you are trapped in religiosity, and in uh, when you're trapped in the the throngs of um, dogmatic belief, and it traps you to the point where you suffocate and you can't see beyond where you see things only in terms of black or white or duality. We're talking about a reality here of non-duality, one that we can engage in the 
conscious awareness of divine presence, we can be at one with that. There's many things we can do, centering prayer, meditation, yoga practice, chanting, singing, writing. There's many ways to pray. And we really do need to learn how to pray. We need to learn how to listen, too. That's what the season is about. And meditation is listening to God, and prayer is talking to God. It's great to have intentions and to talk to the divine about all our concerns. But what good is that if we don't ever offer up our joys or offer up our pain? In the theme of this show today, Conscious Healing, we should offer up our pain. If we know that our loved ones and our dear ones, like our animals and our children and our family members and our friends are suffering, hold them up in your intentions. Hold them in your mind, consciously. Look between the eyebrows, the Christ center that of Christ consciousness. And visualize that person. Cross your hands over your heart. Tune into your magnetic field. Send healing radiation out from your body. You are a healing vessel. You can heal. You can do great things. You can do wonderful things. You simply apply yourself. What better time than now to start? To start reaching out. Start sending out healing vibes, not to use new age terms, but vibrations. We ultimately are fluctuations of consciousness and frequencies. And we are a series of vibrations. We emit a series of vibrations. And the vibrations that we carry with us help to determine whether or not we're sick or well. Our spiritual immune system is strongest when we are in line with the divine will. And what is the will of God? It is that we are love. That we are love and that we enact love and that we serve. Many of us, like myself, we resist service. We resist the mundane. We're scared of the mundane. We're scared of the normal. We want the extraordinary. Well, I, as I've said in past shows, we need to find the, or, the extraordinary and the ordinary. And we need to Allow. Allow ourselves to be used as instruments 
of peace. Peaceful vessels, peaceful instruments. Serving humanity. There's lots of ways to serve. And this time of the year helps us to take that into consideration. Now, it's not a time. I, I encourage you to get away from uh, not fasting. Uh, fasting is a great thing to do. But when you fast for the sake of fasting because you think that you have to, without the purification that really comes with it, the cleansing of the mind and the heart, it really does no good. You have to set intentions to proclaim a new habit, to proclaim a new way, a new path, a healing path. Start on a healing path. If you've choose, chosen to abstain from something and that helps make you feel closer to God, good for you. Good for you. I advocate for something a little bit different. Taking time for daily practice, spiritual practice. And removing just doing away with things that are destructive. Things that are harmful to the soul or to the body or to the mind. Some people speak of master cleanses. Well, we need to cleanse ourselves from the inside out. through conscious application of healing of the self, then we can heal others. In some of the chanting that I was doing this weekend, in some of the healing visualizations that I was doing this weekend, this this past weekend, the, the training I was at, the retreat I was at, I held up one of our cats in accord because he's been suffering for weeks and weeks and weeks. He's been more and more bedridden and has been going to the bathroom, losing control of his functions more and more. He's an old cat. And that happens with old age. He's being treated. We're doing everything in our power to treat him. But honestly, he was bedridden and wouldn't get up much. Was doing pretty shabby, really. And when I came home, he was doing much better. In the course of two days, two days of healing applications from a distance, doesn't have to be right in person. Doesn't have to be in the form of traditional prayers. There's lots of ways to pray, as I said. There's lots of ways to heal as well. But the cat's been doing wonderful. He's been... His health has been a lot better. He hasn't been losing control of his functions as much. He's been getting up from his box where his blanket is. And he's been walking around and he's been chirping and making noises and purring and making his presence known. Now, I'm not always, I'm not the nicest of of people to this cat. If if St. Francis had had trouble loving the leper, I've had trouble loving this cat. He smells... He has a hard time cleaning himself. He's always begging for food, which is a good sign, really. 
Now, these aren't big, a big deal, you might say, Brian, but I still find it hard to love him. I do have compassion for him, but I still have a hard time loving him. And great saints throughout the ages have had trouble loving certain people and certain things. I'm not saying I'm a great saint. Maybe I hope to be one one day. But I have a long way to go. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? It's not about, this isn't about beating ourselves up, but it, it's about recognizing that where we fall short and recognizing that we can do better. Recognizing that we can, in fact, do a little bit more than we're doing. We can do just a little bit more each day. What can you do to become a conscious healer? It's to do all those things, to take time, to remove some of the things that are harmful to you, to your mind, body, and soul. Forget about the sin language. Forget about guilt. Let's just talk about blessing. We can be blessings to other people, other living species, creation itself. That creation deserves our compassion. All of it. We're called to love all of creation. And hold it in our prayers. Whether you're doing daily meditations, daily yoga, daily centering prayer, daily chanting, daily writing, daily journaling, there's much you can do to send out healing vibrations into the universe, into creation, project out into reality, into this one reality that we share in common. healing, sensitivity, compassion. I'm still here. Are you? It's good to take a moment to just regroup, take a moment to just take things in. And to release. A few weeks back, we talked about releasing fear. That's a good practice to do. A good Lenten practice is to release our fears. Release our burdens. Release our cares. Release. 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 Isn't it time you let go of your grievances? Isn't it time you fasted from your grievances, from your obsessions, from your fixations? Ultimately, Lent is about giving up our attachments and our fixations. They can be with people, they can be with things, they can be with food, they can be with 
almost anything. They can be with objects. They can be with material things, with money, institutions, relationships, and people. Attachments to certain people. We might there might be certain relationships we need to end. Certain friendships we need to end. Don't want to keep negative company. Now deep within yourself. Honor the divine. Honor the call within your heart to do something for somebody else today. Say a prayer for something, for a cause, something higher than you. Bend yourself in the spirit of giving. There's so many things that you can do to become a conscious healer. But release the pain and the heartache and the grievance. Release them. They are nothing. They do not control you. They cannot possess you. So I'm glad we took some time together this week to just reflect upon Life, Lent, healing, hope, and also the good things that we have to look forward to, the good things that we have in life, the good things that we have to be thankful for. Show thanks, give thanks. I want to thank you for joining me today and every week here on Turning Points and Transformations. I urge you to become a conscious healer and to let go of the things in the subconscious realm, that subterranean world down deep within yourself that needs to be healed itself and needs to be released. And so I send you forth Wishing you peace and grace. Thank you. You have been listening to the Way of Consciousness Radio Network with programs. Just one final thought to leave you with. Please check out my website, brianrice.org. That's B-R-Y-A-N-R-I-C-E dot org, where you can find information on how to buy and how to get your hands on some music that has encompassed my journey that has been a reflection of my journey as well as meditations and affirmations set to music that are uplifting and meant to empower thank you On Paris Line It perfected me to the point Where my head and my heart Work as one in unison Thanks to my God From whence I've come and to Who my return I- 
may the divine bless you, uplift you, and keep you. Om. Shanti. Peace. Amen. You have been listening to Turning Points and Transformations with Brian Rice. We hope you have enjoyed your program today. Together, let us help build the new humanity and seek to become one with the divine presence of all there is.